and the Quran is recitation. That's what it means. Yeah? It's means to recite. So when someone says there will be a song, I can't remember the rest of the verse, but it explains the Quran perfectly. Right, and that these people in Kedah will be the people that receive the song and they will spread it to the world. So, why would the Bible mention what this? I will, I will have to, I will have to say that. Yeah. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, yeah, from my understanding of Christianity, yeah, there is no mention of A, another prophet, and B, another book, or another revelation beyond that, the message of Christ. Even if it doesn't mention that specifically, right? Yeah. And you're looking to that verse, why not look at his evidence, Muhammad's evidence, and, and look at him, you know, judge him? Yeah, so Now that, okay, so that's something that I can do. And so what I was saying to the other guy who was saying is that as an atheist, if I was to take a step back and as an atheist, and I was to come to the religions, I can therefore look at the protagonist of the religion and see who I will model myself after. Yeah? Right. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the highest standard of for this conversation, man, is Jesus Christ. You're not modeling Jesus. Huh? Are you married? No. Muhammad is married. We're modeling Muhammad. Do you turn the other cheek? No. If I slap you, you won't turn the other cheek. You'll slap me back. Okay, wait, You're modeling it? Muhammad. No, no, no. Wait, Every it? context in life, we model Muhammad. No, no. Jesus was a special case scenario. And especially the way the Bible portrays him, he never had a girlfriend. He never had any relationship with anyone. You know, he was like a, an angel, basically. I You're not an angel. No, no. I 100% agree with yeah. everything that you just said. But what I spoke about was the standard, not what's achievable. I'm talking about the standard. And when I look at the no standard, matter what you do in your life, you will never be that angelic figure. I can strive. Not I even can amongst strive. in the in the. I, th I think we're going back to the you know the point we mentioned that the totality of the message, mm. and Prophet Muhammad was sent for entire mankind. And we do not see any other prophet before him where actually said, okay, there's two things I'm going to ask, uh, ask you to come contemplate. One thing, whether they sent for the entire mankind and they completed the message. There's two criterion here. None of the messenger prior to Muhammad has completed these two tick box. So does he need to tell us that and then I'm going to tie up my argument with my brother. Like, for example, we say when we say prophets and messengers, they are role models. So we, we imitate them, we follow them so that we don't take a wrong role model. So that's why we don't take a liar or a cheater. Rather, we follow the God's approved people. Now, if we look into the characters of all the prophets, we find the similarities between their exceptional characteristics. They are truthful, they are honest, you know, and then if you look at Prophet Muhammad as a holistic man, like for example, he was an orphan. So if an orphan look to find an example, oh, I'm orphan, I have no one, then he can look it up and say, no, the greatest man ever lived on the earth was an orphan too. It's the same way when we look at a woman, husband and wife relationship, because we cannot take Jesus as an example here in that instance, because Jesus was not married, but Prophet Muhammad was. So. As a practical standpoint of view, as a Muslim, we find the imitation or to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And that's why God said that he was sent as a mercy for mankind. Why? So that everyone should receive the guidance in all aspect of you. Just like he was a state leader, he was a husband, he was an orphan, right? He was someone who prosecuted badly and how he dealt with the situation. How can he transform within the 23 years of time? from darkness period to the best of people what is the medicine so all of the question i would say we ask everyone to look and ponder and reflect upon okay well i think look listen does it always, make sense though yeah no no it makes sense yeah. what you're saying to me is that i think is the right thing that someone should be saying to someone when they enter and they say oh, i'm a christian or i'm a 
this because this is really the offering of Islam. It's the offering of Islam isn't is Jesus a man? Is um, you know is is he um, is he the son of God? Or will, that's that's a, that's an argument. Yeah, the actual offering is look, listen. We all believe in God, and we model ourselves up, and we believe that Muhammad is the final prophet, and we model ourselves up after Muhammad. Look at the life of Muhammad, and and from that you should receive revelation yourself. You know, the same way a lot of Christians say that you know the Spirit will transform you. You, as you learn more about Jesus, you're transformed by the Spirit. That's how it should be, rather than the contentiousness that is here, which actually doesn't really solve anything. So, uh, you know what I mean? I, I 100% you know, accept what you're saying. Uh, you know, I've got my view as a, as a Christian. I've been to here a few times and I've seen debates that... Have you read the uh, Prophet's Bible? Huh? Have you, have you received, uh, read the biography of Prophet Muhammad? No, I haven't read the biography. And, and you know, just like mentioned, when we talk about Tawheed, the oneness of God, so the oneness of God, we have like, you know, those breakdowns. So we have three layers of breakdown. So the idea of the three layers of breakdown is to ensure that we worship the correct entity. Because in Islam, this is quite the most important thing is we worship the correct entity so that, you know, our worship can go to the right direction. And Allah in the Quran, Allah said, You know, when you ask the people of the book, ask them, come to a common term, we worship none but Allah. So here Allah is not talking about uh, Allah na'budu illallah. Allah didn't talk about that let's call the people of the book and we believe in one God. No. He's saying we worship the same God. Yeah. So here the clear distinction is the worship. And this in order to worship, that is why it is important for us to make sure whether we are worshipping the tri triune God or the oneness of God, true monotheism, which we believe in that. We don't believe in Trinity. We don't believe the dual nature of God. We believe the, uh, the God of Abraham, means Abraham worship, there is only one God. He didn't believe in triune God. So this is what Quran always go back to the people of the book. And if you can look it up in chapter three, if I'm not mistaken, chapter three, verse 65 to 67 onwards, Allah talks about Abraham, and Allah talks about, oh, people of the book, why do you argue about when you have some knowledge? But why do you argue about which you have no knowledge? And Abraham was neither a Jew nor a Christian, but is someone who was devoted as a Muslim, means someone who's submitted his will to God. This is what Islam, definition of Islam. So we, we often go back, if we have a, like, for example, let's say me and you are brother. And if we have a land, let's say we have a land, and me and you are quarreling about the land, who is the owner is. All we need to do is go back to our father or our grandfather and they will be able to sort it out. They can tell you who the real owner is. So there, when we are disputing between Moses, Muhammad and Jesus, then if you go back to Abraham, then we can solve the matter. And this is what Quran keep affirming. Should you not follow the, the religion of Abraham? Should you not follow the religion of uh, the God of Abraham? You know, This is something, uh, maybe think about it. Well, thank you. Time. Yeah, but, but I appreciate your time though. Yeah, you as well. So and you have a lovely evening. And yeah. it was nice to have a chat with you. You as look, well. Look after it. Thanks. Thank you.